Today's daytime strikes on Kiev mark a change of tactics, as does using so many Russian missiles in recent days. There were 40 air-launched cruise missiles and 35 drones launched yesterday, for example. There's speculation that the Russians are trying to overwhelm Ukraine's air defences, and there may be a political motive too, to remind Ukrainians of Russian power as they hope to reconquer occupied lands in the south and east. The Russian campaign definitely has military utility because the volume of strikes that the Russians are conducting uh, risks exhausting Ukrainian air defence missile systems. And that would open up opportunities for the Russian Air Force to start operating in Ukrainian skies. Um, the Ukrainian response so far, I think, is merely to point out to the Russians that we can do this to you too. So it is primarily a psychological uh, effect. The Russians launch a variety of weapons from a variety of directions, each one with their own characteristics. The Ukrainians try to match each of them with the right defensive weapons. So, cruise missiles fired by Russian warships in the Black Sea, for example, being relatively slow and low flying, can be intercepted by fighter planes and anti-aircraft gun defences. Air-launched missiles can be of the cruise type, like those launched yesterday, or very much faster Kinjal, several of which were fired at Kiev two weeks ago. These so-called hypersonic weapons have to be engaged by the most advanced defences the Ukrainians have, the US Patriot system, a battery of which is stationed near Kiev. There are suggestions that in recent days the Iranian type of drone has also been fired at Kiev simply to goad Ukraine into using up its precious stock of those American-made patriots. That's not particularly likely since those drones fly so low and slow that advanced missiles like that wouldn't be wasted on them. But it's all part of Russia's attempt to fire different weapons from many different points of the compass, often coordinating the timings so they arrive near simultaneously over a target, trying to overmatch Ukraine's defences. How exactly Ukraine manages to defend its airspace, prioritising these different threats with the mixture of Soviet era and Western equipment at their disposal is one of the great untold stories of this war. It's not a mystery to everyone, but I think it's, it's a fairly sensitive topic in terms of how they actually integrate all of those capabilities. But I would note that Ukraine manufactured a lot of SAM systems themselves, and they have many, many skilled air defenders, but also engineers who understand radar. So their ability to plug and play with different radar systems is something that their own defense industry was quite established at before the war. And Ukraine has also apparently been responding in kind to attacks on its capital. Yesterday, the head of Ukrainian military intelligence warned, those who tried to intimidate us, dreaming it would bring some effect, will regret it very soon. In Moscow this morning, a series of explosions and apparent footage of drones being used to attack targets in Russia's capital. As with the attack on the Kremlin early this month, which American intelligence believes was carried out by Ukraine, it's the symbolic value of striking the Russian capital that counts far more than the actual explosive effect. But the real question now concerns the skies over Ukraine and whether the Russians can maintain the current bombardment for longer than Ukraine can defend against it. In other words, who runs out of missiles first? As Ukraine finally disposes of its main Soviet-era missile systems, firing them off, it'll have to husband new Western-supplied ones very carefully indeed.